And welcome, everyone, to another edition of Hoops U. I'm Andy Katz. Pleased to be joined by my co-host and colleague from Big Ten Network and here on Hoops U, Rafael Davis. And we are pleased to be joined by Phil Martelli from the University of Michigan. Um, Phil, you are serving as an interim head coach uh, again, but for different reasons. Juwan Howard recovering from a heart, a heart procedure um, here in the preseason. So first, we want to find out, you know, how is he doing? Uh, every day, a little bit better, and uh, I'm sure that he is anxiously watching via film uh, each and every practice session, uh, but what we are all interested in is that he concentrate on him. We want the best version of Juwan to come back, a better version of Juwan even to come back, uh, but it is a day-by-day day-by-day process and uh he is well aware of all the good wishes and so all the people in the big 10 and in college basketball and even in the high school ranks when we go out recruiting so that that has really helped so thank you to everybody that has reached out and believe believe me when i say he gets the messages you know we don't do it directly but we make sure that he knows every single day who's asking for him so thank you yeah we're very obviously we send our best to him and it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. This was a standard checkup when this was discovered that he needed this procedure. Uh, the that background, not fuzzy on it, but but when he was, uh, when he was in for asthma, uh, he was just concerned about his asthma at a point. Uh, that's when this was found that there was a heart issue. Well, yeah, Coach, definitely send him our well wishes. Uh, hope he speedy recover, gets back. Well, like you said, when he's ready to come back. That's right. One, one thing, Coach, I was um I was reading and I was listening to some things that just kind of how you go about things. You don't um you don't necessarily coach with a whistle, and I thought that was super interesting. Is that um because I know you guys have a few transfers. You got a freshman coming in. Does that throw guys off at times, or it's kind of it is what it is? You know, I had, I hadn't thought about it from the player side. I. Uh, I just, I have always used my voice. When I was a high school coach, I used my voice. In 24 years at St. Joseph's, I just used my voice. The thinking was on Wednesday and Saturday, if you're in a packed Mackey arena, you don't have a whistle. You're you're not going to be in East Lansing using a whistle on on the sideline. So when would you practice the players listening for your voice? Um. So I've never used one and, and I'm not saying I split the atom here and, you know, I've discovered the, I've discovered the way to get to the final four is not use a whistle that hasn't worked yet, but we're sure hoping that it does. Um, But you make an interesting point. I've never, I haven't asked the players. I haven't asked the players. Do you notice that difference? Maybe they don't even notice. I, I don't know. Um, but now I'm going to have to ask them tomorrow when we practice. You know, Phil, what, what I think is interesting here is that you can be a great model for many things. Uh, but in this instance, that already in your tenure at Michigan, you've had to be ready to step in um, as the head coach uh, when he was suspended. And, you know, in this situation, which we don't know, we don't have an end date here. Um and you've got to get this program ready for the season. Uh, so h- how can you convey with your own actions that what you're doing, they will have to do at some point in a game and a practice in a season, you know, up and down the roster. Really great point. Um, and I've been asked that a number of times, excuse me. <clears throat> the, um, <clears throat> the, the, the Maryland game years ago, uh, that was the middle of the game, and you go with what we do. And then the suspension, we were already deep into the season, so what we, how we were doing it was uh, set in stone. It was just kind of like a placeholder. This is a little bit different in that how we're running practice, um, how each player that now is responsible not to do more, 
but to do what, what they're capable of. Like we really can't have an off day, right? We can't have an off day as a staff. I can't go in and say, you know what? I know we usually plan practice at 12 o'clock, but I got to do this and this and this and this, and let's move it to two and, and feel like we're not right on point at three forty-five at right at in the afternoon. So the players have been told the same thing. This is not about doing more. This is doing what you can, but, but doing it every single day. Um, I find this interesting, Andy. I, I find it interesting now at the end of the year, when I watch all of these different interviews in any sport and everybody will say, Oh, this team went through real challenges. And I'm like, yeah, but isn't that just life? Like every day is not uh, the, the greatest of days. You have to make great out of that day. Um, so that's what we're asking the players to do. Like, this is not an excuse. And, and Juwan in no way would want it to be, well, we're starting slow because we we didn't have our head coach for two to, two weeks, a month, or whatever it would be. No, absolutely, positively not not acceptable. And when I look at the man in the mirror, it's not not acceptable. What you just said about getting them ready for today. And then, you know, getting them ready for tomorrow. Um, that's what everybody in the program has to take on. And not, this is not a crutch or an excuse that can be used. And coach, who's been the guy in the locker room that's carrying that message? Because a coach, they can say whatever they whatever they want on the floor. But it's, sometimes it's that, it's that voice in the locker room. Like you said, you got to come in with energy. And I remember... Um, my senior year, I can remember specifically, it was 5.45 in the morning, and Grady Eifert looked at me. He said, uh, Ray, how do you have this much energy This much energy in the morning? And I said, because this is what it takes to win at a high level. So, like, who is that guy in the locker room that's telling your young guys that, that's preaching that to the older guys? Because I was reading, and I saw T. Will say something about missing the tournament last year was just embarrassing. So, how who's, who's keeping that up? Well, you know, it's interesting – the idea of a new team, but we have a new older team, if that makes sense. Olivier Kamwa is a graduate transfer. And Jalen Llewellyn, each day he gets better and better. He's a quiet guy, but he's a graduate player. Namari Barnett is a graduate. Trey Jackson is a graduate. So they've been down the road of college basketball. The Michigan way of doing basketball, you can't have a bigger voice than, than Jace Howard. And think about what he's carrying with him, right? He's carrying with him the son, right? And his parent, not his coach, but his parent it, it had a serious uh, health situation. You know what I mean? So, uh, but Jace is a very, 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 very vocal leader. Terrence Williams is a leader by example, not by word. And then... Um, you guys on the Big Ten Network, you're going to be blown away when you get an opportunity with Olivier. Come on. He, he uh, put it this way. he He's the OG. He's the OG, and he's only been here since July 1. How so? Uh, he's very vocal. Very vocal. And he has a deep voice, Andy, so, like, you hear him. And his way of communicating is it can like be Earl Jones voice. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He'll never get on the Michigan hype video on the, but he is deep and uh, cerebral and he's intentional, right? Like, so he he's here for a reason. He's not here. And I don't, he's not here to play his fifth year of college basketball. No, that makes sense. He's here to win big in college basketball. And um, I, I've been blown away. We, we yeah, Obviously, we started practice Tuesday. He was away for part of the time playing in the World Cup for Finland. Uh, but in this period of time, uh, he's very direct. 
He'll say to a coach, what do you want on this? It could be a drill, could be a situation in practice. What do you want? And then if he feels it has to be explained to a younger teammate, he he's doing that. But we are fortunate, even, even though we're new, we're older, uh, but a lot of this starts with Jace Howard and Terrence Williams and even a young kid who played last year, Will Cheddar, has, is very, very vocal. How, Coach, how, is impor how important is it to get a transfer like like Nakamwa, someone that come that's coming in, wanting to win, that's coming in, it's important to him, put, ready to put in the work, instead of just coming in just to kind of use it as a stepping stone or looking for a check or something of that sort. Right, great point. Um, I think it's a real tribute, to be honest with you. By the time you get to your fourth year in college, and many of these kids now fifth year and sixth year in college, you could be mailing it in. Yep. You could say, I am what I am, and it is what it is. and uh, Or you can come in and say, I'm going to go all out because I want to leave a mark. That's what I'm picking up from Olivier. He wants to leave a mark. He doesn't want to come in and say, you know, five years from now, somebody scratch their head and say, who was that kid we had? And I think he came from Tennessee and what – no, he he wants to he wants to leave a mark on a obviously an unbelievable brand in Michigan and an unbelievable successful brand Michigan athletics and and call it what it is a blue blood program he wants to leave uh, a mark because sometimes all it takes is just 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 that one guy because I can remember um. John Lochte is coming in as a fifth year transfer of the year after we come in last place. And he was that, that spark, that fifth year guy that turned up the locker room. That kind of was that leadership on the court. Cause like you're saying, there are the prior year we were last place in the league and we had fifth year guys that were scheduling classes during practice, trying to finagle their way out of things. So I get, I get exactly what you mean by that. That, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. He's, he's, He's an intriguing, intriguing guy and very powerful. Basketball terms, like when you think of that term power forward, though there, that's that's what they look like. You know, that's so, what they look like. With Hunter Dickinson last few years, focal point, even like you had draft picks in Jed Howard and Kobe Bufkin, it still had to funnel through Hunter. All three gone. What will this team look like offensively? I think the biggest word that I could use, Andy, would be versatility. Um, the first thing offensively is this is going to be Juwan Howard and Howard Isley's offense. And you and I have had a long time with this. And everybody complains in the NCAA and the NCAA and, the, and they did this to us and they did that. One of the great things that they never get enough credit for is when they open it up and allowed you to go on the court with your players. Now you could argue it should be six hours instead of four. It should be eight instead of what it should be 10 weeks instead of eight, whatever you want to do. But Jawan, to his credit used our four hours uh, all throughout the summer up until uh I guess it's two weeks today that he had his surgery. Uh, we used our time to make sure that we had some wrinkles. Obviously, when you're throwing the ball to the low post and it's as, as effective, and I believe we were in the top three in post-entry usage, you know, all those numbers that they have, you know, throw the ball to Hunter. Yeah, that was a good idea. <laughs> uh, so – Will we continue to do that through Taris Reed, through a small ball with Olivier? Yes. Um, but our offense is going to be versatile. It's going to be flexible. That's what I think we have. Like if someone was to say, can Olivier play four? Yes. Can he play small ball five? Yes. Could uh, Terrence Williams play three? Yes. Could he play four? Yes. We have a we have a lot of that across our lineup, so the offense will be reflective of those kind of multiple skill guys. 
Yeah, because coach, like you just said, you can go Olivier at the five. You can throw Trey Jackson as a stretch four. You can go with the two point guard lineup. I mean, you guys got George Washington, who I I think he will be. Um, I think George Washington will be one of those freshmen that no one's talking about that they will start because I think he could end up becoming one of the better shooters in the league. So you got a I think he's name to remember. Yeah, I think so. I think I, I think you I think you guys. I think you guys can do a lot of different things this year. Cause like you said, you throw the ball down in the post to Olivier. I mean, that's, I think he was 71% at the rim last year. So, I mean, you got a lot of options there. So how do you see your guy? Who's in a way who surprised you this off season, rather it's been the open gym or practice or whatnot so far. Wow. Um, Doug McDaniel has made a jump from freshman starter to, to, uh, that was like the one name we haven't mentioned yet. Yeah, he's he is a more consistent shooter. So in that area, he's improved. Uh, it's a, you mentioned earlier Terrence Williams, that little chip. I think that that also was a personal chip, right? Call it the way it is. Uh, Terrence took a lot of body blows social media last year. Yeah. Um, he ha has changed his shot. He's been more consistent. Uh, Will Cheddar, who started at the end of the year for us as a freshman, as a redshirt freshman, he has shown a lot of it, uh, a lot of improvement. Uh, you make a great point about George Washington. I'm always been, I've always been a guy that looks at the top end and says, "What can this guy become?" So there's nobody that we're going into you know, the meat of the practice schedule and saying, well, he's left behind and uh, Yo-Yo Kayat, he's a guy that a lot of people didn't see last year, didn't play many minutes. Uh, and he was at some, some injuries, uh, nagging type things in the summer. He, he, he's got to grow, but I, I go back to the original point, unless everybody on our team gets better, then, then, no one gets better. We have to do this collectively. Phil, you know, few people can give the perspective of being in a school that was maximized its, its uh, you know, its resources and what you did at St. Joe's, getting to the Elite Eight, a whisker of the Final Four. Um, tiny little area, not a lot of money. Going to Michigan, one of the biggest brands in all of college sports. Um, You've been there now, I don't know, was it five years, six years? I've lost track. Um, can you put in perspective as we've moved into this new era, we're going to have 18 teams next year. <laughs> um, obviously, it's better to be on this side than the other side that you were before. But do you see the gap even bigger than ever before? Well, my... My sense is that we're moving that way, you know, and it may, it may not be that it's, it's uh, splintering rapidly, but there's pulls in the fabric uh, and there will be continued to be pulls and whether anybody wants to say it out loud. And as we head towards pay for play, there's gotta be pulls and there are going to have to be hard decisions on smaller campuses and in in and I'm I mean this respectfully in conferences that are not power five how much can you invest to go to that table right and I'm not a big gambler I don't know much about it but you know when you walk in and you say well you can play $50 roulette there or you can play $15 roulette there that that's a choice I never I Teams will always have opportunities to compete for championships. It may just look like a different championship. Um, and I will always tell this story, Andy, the thing that that just absolutely positively stunned me. One of my first weeks here, five years ago, I was driving and I pulled up to a traffic light and I looked at a field and I thought, oh, that's a nice maybe high school or junior high school football field. And it was the practice field for the Michigan band. And so my immediate reaction was, 
We're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. We're not in Kansas anymore. Coach, what has been what has been um what's been your message this off or your or the coaching staff, just the overall message to the guys this offseason? Because I've been in the locker room after not making a tournament. I mean, I especially being a freshman like a Terrace Reed, like a Doug, you go to a program, they're in a tournament every year. As a freshman, I just assumed we were making a tournament because that's what Robbie and those guys did. Absolutely. So how was um and I can remember see, I, I vividly remember this freshman summer going into my freshman year. Lewis Jackson sat on um, myself, AJ, Jay Simpson, Ronnie Johnson down. He sat us down. It was like, this is not going to be easy. And we kind of just blew it off. Like, this is just kind of Purdue. We do this. It just doesn't matter. So what has kind of been the message to the guys and kind of what if, what's, has it opened their eyes that this isn't easy? Well, absolutely. Their eyes are wide open. You know, like this, this isn't easy. Um, when I've had a chance to speak to them, I think what it does, it's like getting hit with that, you know, the cold air when you walk out in the winter. Whoa, what just happened here? Uh, what, what you, what you have to appreciate is total respect for what happened, what happened, what happened prior to you coming, and then to realize that season, whether it ended in the Elite Eight or the NIT is now on a shelf. This story is now being written. And you can't write this story unless you start on the first page. So really the, the focus here is not revenge. Revenge of what? We did that. You know what I mean? Like nobody did anything to us. And, but also understand that this is a fresh story. When we opened this season on July 1, we opened a blank book. So go write your story. Go write your story. And, and where it ends and how it ends, it's all going to be what we do every single day. Every time we sit down to write, then we're writing a new chapter. So don't walk around with your head down. Mm. Don't be apologizing. Earlier I mentioned... No excuses, but it's always been a big deal with me is that you maximize every single day. Today is an off day. Saturday is a practice. Sunday is a practice. But what is it? Did you maximize? Did you maximize that weight training session, that film session? Then at the end, all you want to do is be playing your best basketball this year and not apologizing or or, or hand-wringing over what has happened. Last thing for me, and I know we're up against it here, um, to that end, uh, it's still Michigan. And there are massive expectations. But I can't remember the last time that from the outside, the expectations aren't high on this group. And let's be honest. No one is expecting you to win the Big Ten. No one's saying for sure you'd even make the tournament. And we have not said that about Michigan in quite some time. That may mean nothing within the locker room, but what does that mean that they're not going to, at least at the beginning, you know, you can go nine and zero, and it could change, but um, there won't be that outside pressure on this group. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know in that locker room, do they talk about that? I've 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 often wondered that, Andy. Like with the preseason uh, expectations, publications, polls that come out, I've always felt those were great because it got college basketball, got people talking about college basketball, and 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 it was great for fans. I often thought it was overblown by coaches. Like, we're going to go out. Or, well, what are you going to do about it? Like, really, what can we do about what can we do about people that say borderline this or or at, on the outside looking in or, you know, like, you know, even as close a friend, I can't call Joe Lenardi and say, Joe, please put us in your bracket and, <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll make things better for all of us. No, it won't. You know what? You know what will make things better for us? Let's tomorrow be the best team that we can be 
tomorrow. Um, so I've always, even when you're the top, you know, you, you can walk in and go like, oh yeah, like everybody wants to talk to me a media day. Like mm -hmm. when I go back to practice, it didn't change. So um, we have, we have to be honorable to the people in that locker room in that they get our very best and their very best every day. And then let's see where play, how it plays out. I'm looking forward to it, Coach. Um, I think it's always better when, because I think you guys got some dogs, and like especially with Olivier, I think you guys got some guys that's ready to eat. And I remember um, John Noctis coming in, and before every game, he would say, "Let's eat off these dudes' plate." And I think you guys <laughs> got some guys that want to do that. And I think it'd be, I think when you have that type of makeup, it makes for a tougher team, more disciplined team, more consistent. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys can do. And we're yeah. gonna see in a couple weeks in Minnesota, right? Yeah, they. They asked me if I would be comfortable doing um, media. Really? Day. Have you yeah, ever done media me. before? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll brush up, you know, like. And by the way, by the time we get there, my my fills will be headed to the World Series. So there'll be a lot to talk about. <laughs> Appreciate you, Phil. Thank Thanks, you for folks. including me. All right. Give our best to uh, Juan. I will for sure. Okay. All right, Phil, we got a couple, like, one comment each. We're up against it here. Um, it's interesting. This is the first team we've talked to where, uh, you know, I would say right now I wouldn't pick them to be in the tournament. No, probably not. But they could. But I'm just saying of our group of teams we've talked to, uh, and I'm not saying Nebraska and Penn State will. Well, actually, Minnesota won't. But, I mean, right. um, it's one of the – you know, they're in that group that, like, we don't know. Got to go and, right. And uh, I wouldn't pick them. But their talent, like, I don't know. Like, the pieces, we're going to see how they fit together. It's a lot of unknowns. It reminds me a lot of um, when I played at Purdue my junior year. I mean, no one picked us to make the tournament. Uh, we had just finished last place in the league. And they didn't finish last place. But we had we had, we had had five new guys. I think it was four, five transfers. And we had five freshmen and transfer. Something similar to them. I think they have four transfers and one freshman or something like that. And I think it just going to depends on how serious the guys are, how big of a jump the guys make. Because, I mean, I made a big jump from my sophomore to junior year. AJ made a big jump. John Noctis was that transfer. That's really reminded me of how he's talking about the, Olivia. I think I'm saying that right. But as he really reminds me of that taking it serious – more of a physical leader, a guy that no one's really going to play with. And that's – you need that in the locker room. You need a guy that no one really knows that's going to be a leader that's not scared of even anybody to step up. And they didn't have that last year. They didn't have a leader on the floor at all. They had a lot of talent. I think they had trouble in the locker room. I think they had finger pointing. And sometimes cleaning up the locker room is better than going to get new talent. So I think, uh, I think if they have a go-to guy, that'll help. But then it's going to come down to guard play. Hopefully, Jalen Llewellyn is healthy. Doug McDaniel is going to have a lot on his shoulders. And then the freshman, George Washington. I think a lot depends on if he makes shots. If he makes shots, I think they have a chance. But I I, I think he, I think to have a lot depending on the freshman will be tough. And I will say this real quick. They had chances last year. They lost yeah. a lot of close games, especially at the end, the Illinois game, the Indiana game. Um, so, you know, with Hunter Dickinson and, and Jed Howard and Kobe Buckton, they should have been a tournament team. Yeah, like a I lot mean, of people blame coaching. A lot of people blame those close games on coaching and whatnot. But when you got two NBA guys and all American, somebody's got to make a play. So yeah. uh, it came down to that a lot. Last thing I'll say, and we got to get out of here, is they're very fortunate. You know, everyone has an ego, but Phil checks his at the door. He clearly is in step with Juwan, yeah. doing what Juwan wants. It's his own voice. We know that. But – I think it'll be a smooth transition whenever Juwan is healthy enough to come back. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, obviously they lucked out that he was there. He's still there because he thought about maybe was he going to coach one more year as a top assistant. So uh, the timing worked out for him. Uh, Hoops you we're on Instagram. Yep. Hoops you at Hoops you follow right. us, subscribe on YouTube. Check us out. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk next week.